Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back. This week I wanted to talk about where to attach your uh, cow's tail or pig's tail, whatever name uh, you use for this device, uh, which is a really useful piece of equipment when used correctly uh, for whitewater safety and rescue skills and for kind of kayak skills uh, generally, but it should definitely be used with caution and there have been a number of fatalities um, recently linked to, possibly linked to um, this being used incorrectly, uh, especially when stowed in your kayak. So I just want to talk about where I clip my cow's tail to, or some people call it a pig's tail, um, what's right, what's wrong, why, um, and so on. So the main use of this uh, device is, or its primary feature, is so that you can quickly and easily clip into a, a live bait rope system. It works as an extension, uh, you can cut down time on that. Another like kind of secondary use for it that I've used um, mindful quite a lot is in when I'm like teaching kayaking or guiding or whatever, uh, when I need to like rescue a capsized boat, either from stopping it from going down another rapid, or towing it to shore, or just moving it from one side of the river to another. Um, the key thing about its use is that it's attached to our chest harness here, right? Which uh, under tension will blow away, like hopefully you have done a whitewater safety and rescue course, you understand that like when this is being pulled on, now this is under tension, so you can just pull that buckle at any time and this will come loose. Um, I don't wanna to get too much into like the mechanics of like how you're using it. Um, hopefully you've done a whitewater safety and rescue course, you understand what it's for. I really just wanna talk about where you're gonna stow it in between the times when you use it, because that's actually the most dangerous part of using one of these is where you have it attached to you and how you have it that's most efficient or least efficient, right? So mine goes through the buckle um, and then I have it round on my right hand side because I'm right-handed. Generally speaking, uh, I want to like deploy it with my right hand um, to clip it onto an upside down boat uh, or if I'm clipping into a rope system with my right hand. Um, the Manufacturer's guideline, at least from this Coketat jacket, uh, it has a little uh, blow away buckle here, like a small buckle. Hopefully you can see that. Um, and I should ideally just have it clipped in there. And then when I need to come to use my, like to clip in, I just pull that free. The buckle comes undone uh, and I can clip in and go, right? So that's, that's the ideal. Um, but what you can find is that sometimes is gonna drag down uh, with a lot of like tail dragging and that can be dangerous because now you've got this like kind of snag hazard trailing in the water. This life jacket also has a little pocket up here where you can kind of poke it into. I've never been a huge fan of this because I, I generally have always found that um, my cow's tail just seems to like come loose of its own accord or I'll like not be concentrating and then it's like flying around in the air there. Uh, and so that's something you want to avoid. I like to be, be kind of clipped in uh, in previous years, I have been guilty of uh, clipping it into some places where you shouldn't have it clipped into. Um, I guess the big question really is like, what's a place you shouldn't have it clipped into and why? Um, so the cool thing about the, the little point that they give you on the belt is that it's releasable, right? So the main thing we're worried about is that we're kayaking along, Maybe we take a swim uh, or whatever, or we like fell in the river and we're like swimming down. And then this um, pig's tail gets caught up on a tree or something, or like a, a rock or some overhanging um, wood or whatever. But we ideally, we don't wanna be caught up. We're not like a fish. Cause as soon as you get caught up, you're gonna get dragged down by the current of the river. So we need to be able to release that belt and get this thing away from us if that does happen. What that means is both ends need to be releasable. So by pulling on the chest harness belt, that's gonna get rid of this back end. Then that carabiner end needs to be in a way that will either come free on its own or that you can just quickly pull out, <coughs> excuse me. And so it'll, it'll come free and let you float free, okay? so. In a spot like this, it's, it's going to like blow away under tension and it's going to let you come free. If you have this thing wrapped all the way around here and clipped onto your shoulder strap, and maybe you think, yeah, that's like a lot easier to use from, from that position. Maybe it's easier for you to pull out quickly, clip back in there quickly. Um, 
it, it might be easier, but if you are in that situation where you get caught up, let's see, you have it around here. If you get caught up here, you blow that buckle away, this end comes loose, this end's still attached. And now it, you're getting pulled downstream, pulled downstream, and that carabiner actually needs you to come loose upstream to get out of it which is really hard to do because if you have the, like the force of the, the water pushing on you, it's quite often that you can't get enough force to push back upstream to unload that carabiner and get it off of you, okay? So try and avoid clipping that carabiner to anywhere that doesn't um, release, right? So an example of places that don't release are like the shoulder straps, these little flash things on the side here, okay? Um, this like adjustment buckle on the side here, these are all points that won't release, right? So it's, it's dangerous. But hopefully, I'm, hopefully I'm conveying my point uh, well enough here. You could, I guess, put it through this little buckle on the front here. Um, and in the past, I've done that. Um, and in the past, it's worked for me, but I definitely have broken a couple of these buckles, which is not ideal. So what I'm trying to get out of here is just really think carefully about where you're putting that um, that carabiner so that you can make sure that both ends are releasable because it would really not be ideal for you to be stuck um, because you just clip the carabiner into the wrong place. That's stupid. Um, the kind of last thing I wanted to say just to finish off was if you are using one of these presently uh, and you haven't done a swift water rescue training, uh, I would highly recommend you stop using it and go do a swift water rescue training uh, and take it with you and talk to your instructor about it um, and really just try and get a handle on why it's useful if you even need to have it like you can do a lot of this, the same stuff without it so you don't necessarily need it per se um, so I really just want you to keep that in mind that when used incorrectly these although they're a great tool can be super super dangerous uh, and I just want to make sure you're not putting yourself in a dangerous position as we come into kind of spring paddling season here so a bit of a Debbie Downer week I guess but just keep that in mind um, know, know before you get on the water if if you see someone who has theirs like misadjusted or is in a position where it's actually gonna be dangerous for them, do not be afraid to say, hey man, like I, I think your gears, uh, I think your gear might be kind of dangerous there and that could cause problems for me down the line, right? Because ultimately if they get stuck and you're the one rescuing them and they're stuck because like you didn't tell them at the start of the day that, hey, your, your gear's on wrong and, and now that's caused problems for you down the line, like, that's a big problem, right? So don't be afraid in the parking lot of the put-in just to say, hey, um, I, see your, I see your equipment might be, uh, might be a bit incorrect there, bud, or hey, can I check that out? Do you mind if I take a look at that real quick? There's a bunch of really polite ways to say it um, where you're not like, hey, you're wrong, I'm right. Like, you know, normally those absolutes aren't, uh, are absolutely rubbish, so. That's my two cents for this week. Just try and think really carefully about where you've got that attached to. Um, and like I said, the, the takeaway here is make sure that both ends can attach and come free when you want them to, not when they're just like, woo! All right, cool. Uh, see you guys next week. Peace.